it is so absolutely pretty out here. The only problem is I feel like I'm ruining it by talking sometimes, so I have to get over that. Because it's just perfect. You just have to, you don't have to do anything, just sort of enjoy the peace of it. <laughs> and you know, pretty much like the fun of life is ruining the peace because it gets boring fast, right? Uh, yeah. So, so I was thinking about the double slit experiment. And so the whole question of science and everything is what is consciousness? So we look within thought to explain consciousness. And so when you study something like light, and you can see the incredible similarities between light and consciousness, you start to end up with these frustrating takeaways. Um, is light a wave or a particle? Is it I, this or is it that? Well, it depends on the observer what it is. It's neither wave or particle. So it depends on the observer pointing back to the observer and the experiment. No. <laughs> consciousness itself. So science can't understand consciousness because it's looking within the realm of thought and consciousness can only come back to itself to understand itself. And yet this is the most inane, thoughtless thing and goes against everything that we believe intelligence to be, which is actually a very stupid, funny, misunderstanding. And it's like the moth to the flame. This is meditation itself. This is the sense I am beyond I being a, a concept, a thought. And it burns everything away. It purifies everything away. And it seems as if we have some sort of discomfort abiding in there or doing this um, and that discomfort is often our putting a negative connotation on nothing or meaningless or being without thought um, which is all a sneaky trying to understand what it is. And so a lot of what we do <laughs> is sort of, we become aware of our own misunderstandings around abiding in their meditation or pure awareness. And a while ago, this metaphor came to me because it feels like if I really sit down, focus and write and think clearly, that I can quickly, if I'm like fallen into suffering and just feel all muddled, I can quickly like find my way out. It feels like I'm I get lost in a maze, but I've broken down enough walls that the light shines through and so I can quickly find my way out. Um, so last week we went on a trip and I got to see for the very first time a real like labyrinth designed and made and I didn't know what to expect. We went to this park I'd never been in a city that I'd never really explored. And all it was is like different colored bricks. So you could follow the labyrinth in and then follow the labyrinth out. Um, and I was with my husband and my husband thought it was funny to completely skip the <laughs> ritual <laughs> of doing the labyrinth and staying within the maze and just walking across it and refusing to do the labyrinth. <laughs> 
So when we're finding alignment with thought, it is, it's almost as if we're choosing to um, like go along these sort of false guidelines of the labyrinth. But really, we always have um, the ability, the potential to free ourselves is what we really are. There's nothing that needs liberation. There's just liberation itself already. So it's kind of funny when you consider that light neither being a wave or a particle, but pointing back to the observer of the experiment is covering over really the absolutely insane <laughs> magic of what's going on or what's allowing everything to seem to be going on. Um, and it also seems as if there are so many different ways that we sort of trick ourselves or become subject, object, observer, observed again, um, and emotional ways. So when it comes to love, <laughs> We believe that we can know light is a wave or a particle. This person loves me or this person doesn't love me. I love this person or I do not love this person. Here's an absolutely gorgeous seagull. He says hi. I love how the light, like when it's this time of day, lights them up from the underneath so it looks like they glow. It's the most amazing thing. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, love. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so it turns out <laughs> you don't actually love anybody. Like, you never love anybody. And nobody ever actually loves you. You are love itself. So, like, <laughs> when you feel unloved, all you have to do is tap into love whether you fall in love with the shape of that cloud or the way the sun looks on the seagull's belly at this time of night. You love. Verb. There's no subject or object there. It's so freaking simple. And awareness, consciousness, the birth of the universe, is love itself. These two things don't have to be merged. The full knowledge of something is the love of it. But it's not <laughs> what you think it is. So when you bring in duality, it becomes incredibly dramatic. <laughs> you have love and not love. You have black and white. You have tragedy. You have comedy. You have all of these, like, this ebb and flow of the tides and the um, stark cold of winter and the warmth and beauty of summer. You have all these extreme opposites and yet there's a center, there's an eye of the hurricane that is completely not <laughs> dramatic beyond it, not caught up in the drama whatsoever. And what we do sometimes is we think that it is separate from the drama, <laughs> um, when in reality it's the author of the drama, so it is completely separate from the drama, and yet at the same time, it's not, it's creating it, it's, it has a viewpoint of it that is so beyond any imagined character's viewpoint, and the character's viewpoint is only ever imagined, the character never actually has a viewpoint. So we see this sort of like centerless center as boredom. <laughs> um, and we almost get a kind of writer's block. 
uh, not realizing that we're already creating, that we're already writing this, that we are actually creating writer's block. We've decided to, uh, it would be an interesting story to write about somebody who has writer's block. Um, and of course, this could be an analogy for actual writer's block or feeling lost in life and lost in creation. Um, and it, it helps to know that there's that center. You can tap into it at all times, that the labyrinth doesn't actually have real walls. But it's never anything separate from the drama. <laughs> and... Sometimes when the most unimaginable things happen, or when we feel things to unimaginable extremes for whatever reason. That amount of drama brings us right back to the eye of the storm. When you lose somebody you love and there's nothing you can do about it, Surrendering into that love and loving anyway, whether that subject of your love is not in this world anymore, or wasn't what you thought they were, or doesn't return <laughs> the love. Love is prior to needing to return. The labyrinth is a whole circle unto itself, and truly, the eye of the storm is a borderless, non-shape. I keep forgetting to say this because I guess I'm so good at staying on subject or something like that. But thank you so much to everybody who supports me on Patreon. I just got a new phone with a much better camera. And what I was filming with before had a cracked lens on it. So this should be a lot better and a lot less frustrating to make longer videos on. So I'm really excited about that. And thank you so much again. So if you want to support me, Patreon link is in the description. I put it on most of my videos, but sometimes I'm lazy. So thank you.